I'm super pumped to be here. Are you pumped to have me? Yeah? Okay, that's good um, because I'm not super well behaved and I'm gonna talk about robots and that's gonna be a lot of fun for all of us. Okay, so um, as Kristoff said, my name is Devin. I'm Devin Biel at all the places. That's what you can call me for short, even though it's a little bit longer. I am a senior software engineer at Apple where I get to solve really interesting and awesome problems at scale. Uh, but I'm not going to talk to you at all about that, so don't ask me anything about it. Um, I also run the React.js San Francisco Bay Area Meetup. Um, I've been running that for about five years, just over five years. I'm uh, a really you know, strong contributor to that community, but I also am not going to talk to you about React at all. So I will answer questions about React, but anyway. Um, one thing that you should know about me is that I am a super huge nerd dork about robots. I think that robots are the most awesome thing in the world. I think they're super cute. I think they're logical. I collect robot art. I even have a robot tattoo. Um, I, um, if anybody in the audience is a robot, just know that I am here in servitude of you. Um, I welcome our robot overlords. If you need anything, I'm your, I'm your gal. Okay, so when I was invited to speak at this conference, I knew that I wanted to talk about robots because they are so awesome. We've all agreed on that. Um, you guys understand. Uh, the thing about robots is that it typically requires a little bit of hardware work. Um, anything that is robotics usually has a little bit of hardware. So you have to buy something like a Raspberry Pi or an Ar Arduino. And then um, you use this gun that glues metal to other metal um, that will burn the fuck out of you if you touch it um, in order to, you know, have some sort of I.O. to this piece of hardware. And it's really like long lead. If you mess up the hardware, then you have to somehow replace it before you can even test out your software. So that's really difficult uh, for me, an impatient human being, to understand. I knew that I had to, to do JavaScript because evidently this is a JavaScript conference, so I have to talk about JavaScript. So I knew I already had an impediment in front of me um, that I had to use JavaScript and I wanted to kind to mitigate the amount of effort that I put forth for hardware. So I found this little gem. Do you guys know him? OK. Well, it's awesome. <laughs> His name's Mip. It's evidently a toy for children. Um, but I love him. And he's my friend. He's programmable. He comes with this little app, either for Android or iOS, in which you can program your robot to execute a series of commands, like balance a beer and bring it to you from the fridge, or fight with another robot. Um, one of my favorite parts about the Mip is that it has a dance program. Uh, you can you know, synchronize it to your music library, it'll play a song, break it down, and then the robot will start dancing. But the robot, like, sucks at dancing. These little moves on the bottom are not the robot dance moves. That's like you pushing constantly I.O. to the robot in order to make him do, like, a little spin. He's mostly just, like, going like this. And that's depressing. Because, I don't know if you guys know this, in... In, in the United States, we have this whole robot dance movement where like, you go like this, and like a whole bunch of people do it, and it's like a big deal. I think it's a big deal in Japan, too. I don't even know. But like, I think that it's depressing that robots don't have better dance moves. So if, if a human can do the robot, I feel like a robot should be able to like do the human like this, right? Um, yeah, uh, that's hilarious. I can't believe you're not laughing. Anyway, uh, uh, so um, I did this project last year where I connected to um, an August door lock. It's a Bluetooth powered door lock or also Wi Fi. Um, and in order to do that, I ran a iOS device in dev mode and I sniffed the logs and I um, tried to reverse engineer the uh, Bluetooth connectivity between an iOS device and the August lock to try and like pretend to be my phone that the August lock had like accepted a handshake from. So um, because I am an expert at this technology, I'm not an expert, don't ask me any questions about Bluetooth. Um, because I'm an expert here, I knew that I could reproduce the same sort of logic that I had done uh, with the robot that I had done in the past with the August lock. But then I found something else awesome. Have you guys heard of Cylon? No? It's fine. It's um, from this hybrid group, hybrid group, and they build um, 
robotics APIs for like 20 something different hardware robotics things. So they've reverse engineered all of the IO into a robot already, and then they've put that into JavaScript so I don't even have to think about any of the complicated stuff, and I can focus on the important robot dance moves that we all know is like the fundamental important thing for our society moving forward. So like, um, I, worked, I worked on that and I'm grateful to Cylon and Cylon people are dope, so look up Cylon, it's fine. Uh, so uh, the cool thing about the Cylon library is that it comes with this embedded Bluetooth scanner, which is a hard problem to solve, especially with JavaScript, so I was, I was grateful for that. So um, essentially what you do is you run a scan um, and then that scan returns to you an array of UUIDs. For each UUID, you say, give me more information, and I had to do that over and over and over again until I found the one that was labeled a MIP. Um, okay, this is a funny joke. So I named him Dr. Gaius Baltar. Does anyone get that? Yes, yes. Okay, so um, this is a reference to Battlestar Galactica. It's a trace back to Cylon. Do uh, this, uh, just, Take my word for it, this is a funny joke, and if you don't get it, just laugh, because it's good for your soul. So, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I talked to Dr. Gaius Baltar, and I, I used the documentation that was available to me with Cylon, and I uh, connected via Bluetooth, and then I initialized my robot, and then I just sent him a bunch of movements based upon like what I thought a robot should be dancing. And I was pumped. Um, it did take a long time to connect to Gaius, you know, like upwards of two minutes sometimes, but he was a sick dancer, and I knew that, um, I was pretty much done with this project, so then I took a nap for a couple days. But then I thought to myself, if I could have one robot dance, what if I had three robots dance, and it'd be really incredible and exciting, um, which it would be. And then I, so I like copied and pasted the same code that I sent to Gaia's, and sent it to the three robots, and, and um, they were terrible at dancing. So um, in JavaScript we had this thread, the one, you guys know about it? Yeah, just the one. Uh, that thread sucks because you can't like send a bunch of Bluetooth commands through and a bunch of like movements to make a robot dance to three different robots at once. I can never connect to all three robots at the same time. So I had to start like breaking down my problem space and figuring out like where all of the different problems were being introduced. First and foremost, uh, Bluetooth is like super unpredictable latency, um, even if I wanted to fake it in front of you and say like, oh, I think it'll take two minutes to connect to robot foo, and then with robot bar, I'll be able to like initialize them afterward. The problem was I could be sending all of the movements to robot one, and he would almost be finished with his dance moves by the time robot two started. So like having them dance to the beat of a music was virtually impossible. Uh, the robots are also a little autonomous, so uh, before I connect to them, they could be at different places in front of me, facing different directions. So uh, by the time they started moving, if I just was executing a series of strings, they wouldn't uh, a series of commands, they wouldn't necessarily be dancing in sync, um, which was problematic. Also, they're on wheels, so like when you see the floor with little ridges and stuff, those little ridges will cause them to get out of sync too, so that was kind of lame. Um, every time I would see them dance over and over again, it was, it was kind of ugly. Um, another interesting thing is one of the robots that I bought is just a phenomenal dancer. She um, like gives higher kicks than everyone else, bigger spins, and like no matter how many less batteries or level of programming can stop her from being the best dancer of the three. So um, we'll just take a quick pause. This is an actual photograph of all three of my robots. Um, on your left is Boomer. <laughs> She's the best. And then the background dancers, Gaius took a second, uh, a, a back seat. So it's Gaius and Six are the background dancers. This is another hilarious joke about Battlestar Galactica. Uh, so yeah, these are the robots and this is what they look like with their clothes off. Um, oh, so here's a cool thing. Okay, you guys know about node clusters? Yeah. Okay, so um, I follow the documentation exactly. I'm not an expert on this. Maybe I am. I don't know. 
maybe compared to you. I don't know. Um, so essentially what you do is um, you create a JavaScript file, you uh, fork, you, you create an instance of a cluster, you fork it, which immediately re-executes the entire file at once. So your file is essentially like one giant binary um, conditional where you say, if it's master, execute this bit of logic. If it's a worker, execute this other bit of logic. So I could do all of like the trace work on BPM work and um, do all the Bluetooth connectivity with one um, instance and then do all the, connect the, the dancing in, in separate instances after that. So this was cool. This gave, this solved one of my problems, which was connecting to the, to the different robots at, at different times and kind of solving for that Bluetooth latency as well. Um, so then I started thinking about other ways to solve my problems. Uh, the first thing was that I found a bunch of people uh, using Cylon and, and their sister projects um, uh, uh, doing discovery, the Bluetooth discovery in a separate thread, then doing the movement. So essentially you could do the discovery of Bluetooth, you could initialize your robot, and then as a callback or, or like um, an anonymous callback, you could say later on execute this series of movements. So I did that. So that at least gave me, I had, I had to sort of uh, fake how long I knew that would take by, by lots and lots and lots of permutations, but essentially I could predict, like, it would take at least eight seconds for all of the robots to become initialized, and then I could send them all the movements at the same time in the worker cluster. But I had this other problem. Um, you guys, so have you ever seen a whole lot of people dancing on stage together, and one person will, like, fall down or, like, kick extra high, and you look to that person, but sort of instantly they kind of gain back sync and you, and you lose them in the crowd because they're good dancers. Um, that, that concept, so I read this blog post about an actual human dancer, not a robot dancer, who uh, t taught me about dancing in time. So essentially with human beings, uh, when we want to dance, we don't say, here is my series of commands, please execute them and hopefully it aligns with the end of the song by the time I am finished with all of my moves. Instead, we listen to these visual, these, uh, these, these cues in music to say, here's when I'm going to do my high kick, or here's when I'm going to sing like this, or, or whatever. So I needed to do the same thing with the robots that humans do when they, when they dance you know, like this. Um, so, uh, so I had to pay, break down uh, the music um, that was coming in into BPMs and duration. And then based upon the BPM at, e at, at each individual segment, I could um, create different bits of music. Or, or essentially I created like this huge data structure of uh, musical segments to particular movements and light ups so that I could make them continually dance and sync over and over again. So um, that's the end of the slides. I'm just going to show you some code real fast. It's kind of boring. Do you guys want? Yeah, I'll show you this. So essentially, um, this is my uh, executable, my app.js. You can see there's more funny jokes here. So you would have a Cylon wrapper, like with the, like you wrap, wrap it up. But I called it Cylon wrapper, like with your mouth, because that's funnier. And um, for each, I could probably wrap, put these in, hindsight's 2020. Anyway. Um, the choreography I called Money Moves because of Cardi B. You guys know, she's great. Anyway, so each robot has um, choreography and, and it's incredible because I'm an incredible developer. And um, you can see here is the master in which I'm like doing all the logic to break down the music. And, um, and then I'm sending these messages to the worker in which, um, and the message is dance, duh and then each robot, when he is ready, um, begins to dance, um, executing their money moves. So Boomer's money moves are just like a sequence of, um, I call them zips and zaps. Um, zips and zaps, and uh, those are, I, I had to break it down, essentially like you turn into different directions and it takes an angle and a speed, and the speed is like centimeters per second, it's not very intuitive. Um, and then a, a series of boom swagger booms uh, executes zips and zaps, and then you can see <laughs> that the dance moves are, um, you know, various segments to that. Uh, so that is that part of things. Um, so everyone, I'd like to introduce you to my friends. So uh, first and foremost is our star of the show. This is Boomer. She's going to say something cute. Yeah. So she'll go first. So that's Boomer. She's the best dancer of them all. 
And then we've got, um, this is six. <laughs> yeah, they make a lot of cute sounds, actually. Okay, and then this is Gaius. Six is a big mover, I gotta keep her. <laughs> okay, here, here we go. Just wait, just wait. Like Robot 3 didn't start till later because of the Bluetooth latency, but he caught up really fast because he knew his marks, because he's a good dancer and he's studied techniques. Um, anyway, that's it. Those are my robots. I'm Devin. Hope you had fun.